it's 12 o'clock. We'll go ahead and get started in just one minute. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. OK, wonderful. So thank you for joining today. Uh, I appreciate the invitation from Yukon uh, Human Resources uh, to provide this presentation called Fuel for the Future, Power Up Your Plate. My name is Heather Paracchio. And just a little bit about me, I am a Husky. I um, have a background in uh, nutrition. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. I went to UConn for both undergraduate and graduate degrees in nutritional sciences and allied health sciences. And now I'm faculty at UConn working in the Department of Extension uh, within the College of Agriculture. So um, wonderful to be here today. Um, I'm happy to talk about fuel for the future. So uh, each year, um, the National Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has a campaign for this month. Uh, this month is National Nutrition Month, and this year's theme is fuel for the future. And the um, what that is, is eating with sustainability in mind um, is a tasty way to nourish ourselves during every phase of life and a way to protect the environment. So registered dietitian nutritionists can help you to create healthy habits that are sustainable while celebrating your unique needs. My hope is that during this presentation, you will take away practical um, solutions to healthy eating um, that you can implement right away in your own home and your own life uh, during during lunch um, on your um, hopeful lump lunch break. So today's presentation, I'll be covering a couple topics. The first will be how to build a healthy meal. Um, the next will be meal ideas for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then some tools for meal planning. If you are um, a parent, a caregiver, spouse, and you're um, preparing meals at home for your family, I have some, some tips and tri tricks for meal planning. Also, um, different ways uh, to ease that meal prep at home. How can you make it faster? How can you get dinner on the table quickly? And then some resources that you might want to come back to. I do encourage you to ask uh, questions if you have them in the chat, and then I'll leave some time for questions at the end. Okay, so first up, how do we build a healthy meal? So I like to use this tool called a My Plate Planner. And I like this tool because it's visual. So there is My Plate, which is a wonderful tool. I use that often through the USDA, um, but it just has the names of the food groups. I like this particular planner because it shows what types of food we should have on our plate. So um, you'll notice that this is a colorful plate. It's full of nutrient dense foods. And what I mean by that are foods that come from the earth um, or that are less processed. So um, if one uh, one practical tip for building a healthy meal is to divide your plate in half. So if you imagine a, an imaginary line down your plate, you want half of the plate to be covered in vegetables. Hopefully those will be non-starchy vegetables. We'll take some time to talk about that today. One quarter of our plate with starchy food. So here it shows rice and beans. Um, and then a quarter plate, a quarter of the plate as protein rich foods. So for example, here's grilled chicken. Um, and uh, you'll see that there's some fruit on the plate as well. It's kind of set aside an orange as dessert and water as a drink. So there we have all, um, we have four out of five food groups, which is fantastic for building a healthy meal. And we have um, listed on the slide all five food groups. So I'm going to spend some time talking about each of the food groups and um, and then we'll be talking about how to prepare those meals in a balanced way. So first up is fruits and vegetables. Um, the best tip I have is to make half of your lunchbox or half of your dinner as fruits and vegetables. Only one in four children are consuming enough fruits and vegetables and only one in 10 adults. So one of the best things you can do for good health to protect your body um, against uh, chronic disease um, is to cover half of that plate in fruits and vegetables at mealtime. 
Next up is grains. So grains, I could spend a whole hour talking about grains, but we're going to do a quick, short nutrition 101. So um, grains, in particular, whole grains provide more vitamins, minerals, and fiber than white refined processed grains. Some examples of whole grains include oats, quinoa, barley, brown rice, um, whole grain pasta, whole wheat pasta, um, tortillas and bread that are whole wheat, as well as whole grain cereals and popcorn corn as a whole grain, um, and we can talk more about that in a little bit. But with the grains, whole grains will help you to feel more um, satiety or more fullness. So um, if you think of a time when you had perhaps oatmeal for breakfast, usually that oatmeal will keep you feeling full for several hours, where in comparison, if you had a donut or you had a bagel, um, you, especially a plain bagel, you really won't feel full for very long. And oftentimes within an hour or two, you're hungry again. And so whole grains can help you to feel more full and give you more vitamins and minerals. Next up is protein. So protein is especially important um, especially if you're a University of Connecticut employee, um, protein helps us to stay awake and stay alert, stay focused on a task. So um, if we want to feel sharp and clear at the start of our day, maybe in addition to our coffee, um, we have some protein. So examples of protein include uh, lean poultry, like chicken, turkey, um, lean fish, uh, eggs, low-fat dairy, uh, like low-fat cheese and yogurt, those can be excellent sources of protein, as well as um, tofu, edamame, um, different types of beans. Lentils are an excellent source of protein. They provide 18 grams of protein per cup, um, as well as nuts and seeds. So including nuts and um, lean protein sources uh, can really help us, again, to feel awake, feel alert, stay focused, um, and we want to do our best to choose protein with most meals and snacks to stay feeling full. Next up is dairy. So dairy also provides some protein. It can provide satiety, it can help us to reach our calcium needs and our vitamin D needs. Um, Good sources of, pro of, excuse me, of dairy include milk, yogurt, string cheese, um, and you want to make sure if you're packing these as a, a lunch at work that you include an ice pack or store in the refrigerator to help reduce, reduce the risk of foodborne illness. Um, I did not include it on the slide, but um, many uh, people are choosing um, plant-based uh, dairy products or dairy alternatives like oat milk, almond milk, um, coconut milk. It is important to note with those that they do not provide the same protein as um, cow's milk. So they're often lower in protein or contain no protein. Um, so the only um, alternative milk that is comparable to cow's milk would be soy milk. Um, and I, I see that uh, often with um, many children being offered those alternative milks, um, but it, it does not provide the same um, as cow's milk. Okay, so um, want to spend a minute to transition into breakfast. So I have some practical tips for breakfast, for lunch, and dinner. So breakfast, we can keep it simple. Breakfast can contain two or three food groups. Um, some strategies to help with a quick breakfast are make it the night before or prepare it on a weekend to help save time in the morning. Some uh, examples of a healthy balanced breakfast would include an egg sandwich, a whole grain waffle with fruit, um, oatmeal with berries, or something like a breakfast burrito. And some meal ideas for a healthy breakfast um, are shown here. So again, I like this visual. It's a great one for sort of the refrigerator on a, a morning when you might be tired. Like, what can I have for breakfast again? So um, this, we want to choose one item from each section of the plate. So for example, um, one starch, one protein, and something from the other side of the plate, like a small piece of fruit, or we could leave that empty. Um, and we want a quarter protein, a quarter starch, and maybe to add a fruit. So examples of this would be things like whole grain cereal, milk, and you know a few banana slices, um, an egg on toast, or a whole wheat toast with peanut butter. I'm going to pause for a minute 
and I want to take some time. I see that there's quite a few people in the room. Um, I just want to take a minute to ask in the chat if you could share, you know, what is your best time saving tip for breakfast? Is there something that you do now to save time? And while I wait for someone to be brave and chat, I'm going to share a tip at my home. So I have, uh, I work full time for UConn. I have three children, two dogs, um, three different schools my children are in. And so a tip that I do is the night before, if I can, I set the breakfast table and I will put out the cereal or put out the fruit that we're going to have in the morning um, just to save time. I see Donalyn is typing something. Thank you. Also, other tips would be to make things ahead of time. So on a weekend, I may um, do some hard boiled eggs and those eggs will last two or three days. So that'll get me to Wednesday. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. So she said she makes egg muffins on Sunday for the week and includes egg and spinach and mushrooms. Awesome idea. I love that. Um, wonderful. OK. Oh, I see Jenna's typing an example, too. Thank you guys. I appreciate the participation. We always learn from best from each other. And towards the end of my presentation, I have some tips that I've learned from doing these classes for 16 years. Uh, I've learned lots of great tips from busy parents. Um, yes, great question. So someone said they have a banana shake, super quick. Okay. And then is Greek yogurt a good food? So excellent question. So Greek yogurt is a great food. Um, it's typically high in protein. Uh, my suggestion would be just to look at the sugar content. Some of the Greek yogurts have added sugar uh, because they've added fruit and sugar and some are plain. So the, the best choice, like on a scale of one to a hundred, I would say Greek yogurt that's non-fat plain would be a hundred. And then as you add those sugars, it is a little bit less healthy because there's some added sugar to it, but fantastic questions. Okay, I'll go ahead and go back to sharing my breakfast tips. Thank you for your participation. Okay, just wait a second. Uh, hopefully everyone can see my screen again. So here are some meal ideas for healthy breakfast. So one uh, tip we already heard, the making the egg um, sort of muffins or egg sandwiches ahead. Another um, suggestion is to do an egg bake. So instead of um, individual egg sandwiches, you can actually just cook eggs right in a casserole dish, add in all those vegetables and cut into squares and, and put on an English muffin or um, whole grain toast. Another suggestion is overnight oats. So you can make overnight oats in a mason jar. Um, you can make those up on a weekend and have a quick breakfast in the morning. You can either eat them cold or you can reheat. Um, and then another tip is, uh, I learned this from one of my parents I was teaching a class to, but to put all of your smoothie ingredients in a zip top bag and store it in the freezer. And then when you go to make your banana shake or your smoothie, you already have everything ready to go. So if you wanted to add strawberries and blueberries and you know maybe a quarter of a banana and spinach, you could make up several days and store those right in the freezer. So we're going to jump into lunch. And for lunch, again, we're going to follow that My Plate planner. So half of our plate is non-starchy vegetables, quarter plate whole grains if we're able, and a quarter of the plate of lean protein. So for example, I have a photo here of a salad. It looks like there's lots of bright colors. We're powering up our plate with nutrient-dense foods. So some Quick, uh, healthy lunch ideas would be um, a sandwich with leftover protein. If we have leftover fish or leftover chicken or turkey, maybe from the evening before, throwing that into a whole grain pita, adding vegetables in. Um, another example would be a bento box style lunch box. So um, maybe you're making lunch for your children, have another box right next to it and, and you can easily throw, you know, um, chopped fruit, chopped vegetables, um, and lean protein, like a lean turkey, um, right into your own lunchbox and, and make it at the same time. So some meal ideas for healthy lunches. You could include cut raw vegetables, like I was just saying. You could add salad dressing or hummus. 
you can add other sliced vegetables. So think outside the box, um, not just lettuce and tomato, but maybe shredded cabbage or cucumber slices, shredded carrot. Um, if you need uh, to be a little bit more convenient, um, some of the uh, salads that are, are pre-made, oftentimes those are already shredded and you could add that easily to a sandwich to power up your plate. Um, you can also mix cut vegetables like onions or peppers, celery, um, other things. Actually, this week I made tuna, uh, meal prep tuna, and I use scallions and capers to give it extra flavor. Um, so lots of different uh, strategies we can use to power up our lunch plate with vegetables. Um, we can um, add to tuna like I suggested or um, egg salad, chicken salad. We can also add chopped fruit. So um, a great recipe that I like to share with cooking demonstrations in some of my work is a tuna salad that uses chopped apple. So instead of like a Waldorf salad where you'd have chicken and apple and nuts, you actually use um, tuna, chopped apple and um, Greek yogurt that we were just talking about, plain Greek yogurt instead of mayonnaise to keep it lower in fat, higher in protein. So we want to always be varying our salads, um, adding different vegetables, different color vegetables to make sure we're getting a variety of different vitamins and minerals. And a suggestion I would have is if you have a favorite salad at a restaurant or um, you know at a, a grab and go kind of place, copying that at home and, and making that for a few days during the week, um, that can be a great strategy to ensure that we will enjoy our sort of uh, meal prepped uh, lunches or dinners. Okay, so I'm gonna pause again one more minute. And um, awesome, I see uh, someone wrote in the chat, I smash avocado in my tuna instead of mayo. And that is fantastic. I've had both, um, tuna salad like that and chicken salad and avocado gives it such great flavor and that fat is wonderful because it's a healthy fat and it helps us to feel more full it increases satiety so i was going to ask um, what are some of your favorite meals for lunch or what are some favorite things that you bring into work that are sort of easy to pack i see suzanne typing thank you Awesome. So someone eats tuna, Suzanne shared, she eats tuna on top of avocado toast. It's delicious and it works really well because it has all three components of the plate. Excellent. And that's wonderful. Anytime we can find a good combination of foods like that, um, one, it's really satisfying, it's tasty, it's colorful, um, but it also will help us feel full for a few hours. And if we include that protein, it's gonna help us feel focused. So we're gonna be able to get our work done, um, get through all those emails and that's awesome. So I see someone else shared, um, they enjoy packing potato salad, a green lentil salad, that sounds good, with vegetables or a chickpea salad with vegetables. Excellent, all of those are high in fiber, um, very colorful and um, potatoes are a, a great food too. Um, with rising food costs, I think potatoes sometimes get picked on as being you know, too high carb, but potatoes are, if we're watching the portion, potatoes are, are fantastic. They're nutrient dense, um, they're low cost, and they stay fresh a while in our pantry, so they're practical. Awesome, I see some, oh, here's some other examples, is also a quinoa barbecue chicken salad. Um, thank you for sharing the, if you have the link, that's awesome, but it includes corn, black beans, grilled chicken, and it uses barbecue yogurt. That sounds awesome as a sauce. Yeah, and that's a great one because it sounds like you could um, make it once. I always say, you know, cook once, eat twice, maybe cook once, eat two or three times, but that, anytime we can do that time saving, especially um, if we're busy with work or busy with families. Okay, go back. And speaking of family, so some of you may be um, parents or caregivers and you're um, not only thinking of food for yourself, but thinking of food for your family or for your children. So um, just some quick suggestions here, but, uh, oh, I apologize. Um, so 
you'll see this as like a bento box style, but um, just some suggestions would be uh, to make it more fun, cutting fruits and vegetables in different shapes, um, using you know cookie cutters, uh, toothpicks can be a great way to get kids excited about eating foods. Um, also different dips or sauces, like that bar barbecue yogurt dip sounds great. Um, hummus can be a great one, um, guacamole. And then another strategy is to also use cinnamon. So you'll see in the top uh, there of apples that are sliced up in a little bit of cinnamon, that way they don't look brown. Uh, but those are all great uh, strategies for making lunch boxes more fun. As far as beverages, so we didn't spend a lot of time on this, but um, we want to be thinking of zero calorie or nutrient dense drinks. So examples of that would be water, seltzer. Um, if we are going to choose 100% juice, we want small portions. So it's recommended for children, you know, four to six ounces, not really anymore. And for adults, no more than eight ounces. And of course, we'd want it to be 100% juice. Um, and then as far as nutrient dense drinks, uh, milk would be a good choice. So next up is dinner. Um, I told you we would we would cover a little bit of everything in this presentation. So another way to power up your plate uh, with dinner is to choose to use this my plate planner again. So um, it sounds like many of you are doing this when you shared the the meals that you're you're eating. Um, but we want to cover half of our plate with non-starchy vegetables, um, and it says here, fill half your plate with more than one vegetable so you won't get tired of your favorites. And I think that's especially true. If we had broccoli for lunch and dinner every night of the week, not only would we be bored of broccoli, we would also not be getting a variety of different nutrients. So we want to eat the rainbow and we want to do that by eating lots of different color fruits and vegetables. Um, and this not only applies to a plate like this, but but any meal that we have. So if we have a mixed dish, like a bowl or a taco, a burrito, we want our soup, we want to be using the same concept. So if we were making a soup, we'd want half of our soup to include non-starchy vegetables, a quarter of that soup to have a starch. So maybe some brown rice or whole grain pasta or a potato in there or corn, like you shared on that salad, Suzanne. Um, and then a quarter of that dish or that soup as lean protein. So um, maybe we include chicken or turkey or um, beans. Those would all be great sources of protein. So for dinner, we might need some more strategies. Often we're busy, maybe we're working late. Uh, we have to get home and get dinner on the table very quickly. So um, some strategies for dinner are to serve family style meals, um, offering maybe the protein and the starch uh, separately from the fruits and vegetables. And um, we want to be thinking of quick cooking or easy protein foods, things like grilled meats, those can cook quickly, um, or maybe preparing in the morning. Um, maybe we we take some time to throw something into the, the slow cooker, or perhaps we pressure cook um, something uh, or prepare it in the morning and then pressure cook in the evening so it cooks more quickly. And then of course we want that half that plate as vegetables. So those could be roasted vegetables, raw vegetables, steamed vegetables, And so some tools to ease that menu planning is to brainstorm a st side strategy. And this is something I, I do in my classes at times, but have um, have you write with your family, um, you know, what foods you all like. So looking at maybe a cookbook or coming up with sides that you know everyone enjoys and having those familiar sides to share at the table, especially with young children, um, it takes 10 to 20 exposures for them to learn to like a food. And so we want to always be offering new food, but we want to be offering new food alongside food that's familiar. Um, if we offer too many new foods at once, it's scary and children will run away from the table. So if we always have a safe food or some safe foods on the table that they're familiar with already and we introduce one new food, um, oftentimes children will be more apt to try that new food. I think same goes with adults. Um, so something simple that we could do is we can 
serve something family style. So for example, um, maybe we include uh, cut pineapple with dinner to go alongside with a stir fry. Um, if not all of the cut pineapple is eaten at the dinner meal and it's served family style, we can quickly put a lid back on that pineapple. Maybe it goes into lunch boxes in the morning. Um, so, or maybe we serve it with breakfast in the morning. So um, just thinking smart strategies like that for side dishes. Um, and if we're able to serve family style versus plated, as it can invite, um, especially younger children in, into trying more foods, if they have, if they feel empowered to um, put their own food on their plate. Next up, I have some time saving hacks and I learned these from teaching these classes. Um, one mom a few years back shared this strategy with me, but she said that she will buy uh, meats in bulk, especially ground meats uh, like turkey or beef and brown and drain all the fat and uh, put it into zip top bags based on portions. So if she knows, oh, two family members are home, I'm going to do a stack size. You know, four family members are home, I'm going to do a quart size and freeze all of those. And then you have it, the meat ready to go into tacos or a chili or even a soup. Um, and just such a time saving strategy for busy weeknights. Um, another strategy is to grill extra meats or fish on the weekend and use it in meals for two or three days after that. And then I think most importantly is to give yourself grace. Um, if you know you have a very busy week, it's okay to not have every single meal um, look like it's come from a magazine or come from the farmer's market. Um, it's okay to have time saving hacks. So, um, you know, it's okay to have fresh broccoli in your fridge and maybe you have frozen broccoli for a quick meal. Um, maybe you, you know, cook cook chicken a few times a week, but you use the rotisserie chicken. You have to, um, you have to have that, that balance. We can't cook everything from scratch every single day. It's just not usually possible with time. And this is an example of that dinner with children that I was uh, sharing. So you'll see like the cut pineapple at the top and then keeping the rice and broccoli separate. Um, and then another example. So some other tools to ease menu planning include something called a dinner formula. I can't take credit from this. This is another dietitian that I follow, but um, I love this idea, especially for um, busy families or working families. Um, you pick a theme for each night that works for you. So for example, Mondays might be Mexican food Monday, Italian food Tuesday, Wednesday is whatever Wednesday, things like that. But um, you just keep that theme of the meal and then you use items that are on sale or items in season to shape the menu. Um, and this, uh, I've used this with my family. I found it to be really helpful um, and you know, gives you some flexibility to use leftovers, to, to plan around sales. Um, a, another strategy is something called a meal matrix. And this strategy uh, really requires uh, just spending a few minutes with your family to find out what types of foods you enjoy eating. So for example, it might be chicken and salmon and pork, something like that. And you create a list of your family's favorite proteins, favorite vegetables, favorite starches, and favorite herbs and spices. And essentially you make just like a little chart and you rotate. So you might have chicken and rice and broccoli, and then you might have um, pork and potato and cabbage or something. So you can keep flipping the, the vegetable and the starch to go with that protein. Um, you can also use this spreadsheet to create new meal combinations. Here's like shrimp, peppers, onions, quinoa, and cilantro in a bowl. Okay. Um, important to plan ahead. So if you plan to you plan to fail if you fail to plan. So it can help just spending a few minutes on the weekend. Some, if there's any downtime, you know, planning out that menu, planning out a shopping list, um, and deciding a few things to prepare ahead can can go a long way. Uh, knowing there are rising food prices, um, I did want to include in this presentation some money-saving strategies. So 
now that you've planned, um, it's time to purchase your groceries. Some tips are sticking to your grocery list, um, checking online for sales and coupons at the store, um, reading nutrition labels. I often um, share with families that I work with, if you don't have time to read those labels, a little trick is uh, dietitians across the state um, have worked, uh, especially in the Department of um, social services and with WIC, the Women, Infant, and Children program, they've analyzed many of the food products at the store and they've included a WIC sticker. It'll say W-I-C. So if you are in the aisle for breads, for example, there are thousands of different choices, but if you want to choose quickly a whole grain high fiber bread, look for that WIC label because the dietitian is already kind of um, vouch that that is a nutrient dense food. And so that can be a, a quick strategy. You'll also see that WIC label on um, whole grain items and dairy products as well. Another strategy is to buy fresh, excuse me, fresh fruits and vegetables that are in season. We're lucky here in Connecticut. We have lots of farms, lots of um, fresh produce options, I would say May through October, November. Um, and so using uh, the Connecticut Department of Agriculture has a crop calendar that shows which items are in season when, using that to know that strawberries are in season and fresh in June and blueberries are you know fresh and in season in July and planning meals around that calendar. Um, shopping at local farmers markets. Um, and then another strategy is to compare unit prices um, to get the best deal on the foods that you purchase. So I included one little quiz here. We just have a couple minutes left, but unit prices, um, it's the price that um, shows you how much the item costs per pound, per ounce, or other measurement. It is what's circled in green here. And the the number that's shown in orange. So we're used to looking at the yellow, the 285 or 16 ounces of peanut butter. We look at the price that we pay at the register. We often don't look at that unit price, but that unit price helps us compare. So you'll see here, the larger container of peanut butter, although it costs more at the register, price per pound is less. So we're actually paying 14 cents less per pound to buy the larger unit. So um, it may make sense to buy that larger packet a package, sometimes it's cheaper to buy two smaller packages than one large. So I have a little quiz for you, but which is a better value, um, item A or item B? And I'll let you go ahead and answer in the chat and we'll come back to that maybe in a minute, but you're, you wanna use that unit price to see what is a better price. And you can tell these prices are not recent prices. <laughs> They're older pictures because price has gone up. Um, and I can't see the chat, but if you guess B, you guess correctly. So 99 cents um, per quart for the price of the gallon of milk. Um, I did wanna include some tools to ease meal prep. So some, Strategies could be uh, including glass containers with snap lock lids um, with several compartments or a large compartment. Um, that can help you to see the food that you have, especially fresh foods, and ensure that you use them in a timely manner. Often if they're kept in, um, uh, you know, not a see-through container, that's when we find the broccoli at the back of the fridge that went bad. Um, so keeping those clear containers. Another strategy is choosing bento box uh, type containers, lots of different cubbies. We can use up leftovers more easily. And then also insulated containers for hot foods, things like thermos and things like that. Um, also, if you have young children, I've found these toothpicks to be really fun and great ways for children to try new foods. And here's a way, uh, an example of how to prep your refrigerator for success. You'll see they have those clear containers, the, the lock lids, so they stay fresh. Um, and uh, storing fresh herbs, um, like the scallions in the back, in uh, like a mason jar with water can help uh, prolong their life. And lastly, um, just some resources. So I included um, Eat Right, which is the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. There's lots of resources on there for ways to eat right and eat healthy. Um, My Plate. Uh, the My Plate Planner tool that I showed throughout this presentation. I have a link to healthy lunch ideas. Those are designed for kids, but honestly, they work great for adults as well. Um, some healthy school lunch ideas, and then some smoothies and how to make balanced smoothies. And lastly, some low cost healthy meal ideas. And I will stop sharing and just leave a, a couple minutes for questions.
And I see, oh, I, there's lots of questions in the chat. Excellent. So let me take a minute to go back to those. So I see, um, I drink green tea throughout the day. Is that bad because of caffeine? Great question. So um, green tea is okay. Green tea is uh, good for good health. I would say if you had a medical condition, perhaps like high blood pressure, you might want to limit your caffeine. You'd want to ask your doctor, but typically, you know, one, two, three cups would be okay. Um, I would not recommend, you know, exceeding three cups, especially if you're having coffee or um, colas or other kinds of uh, caffeine um, foods. Um, another question is, does she freeze it after cooking? So I think that this might be in reference to the ground meat. And yes, so the idea is if you bought, for example, like the large pack of ground turkey, lean ground turkey, you could um, brown the entire package and then freeze in smaller portions the cooked ground meat. And I have to say, I've used that strategy at home and it saves so much time. Taco Tuesday is now 10 minutes instead of 35 minutes of cooking. Um, thank you. I see someone answered B. You got it correct. And then Oh, Linda asked a, a, a long answered question, but what do you think of intermittent fasting to lose weight? So I can, I'd be happy to share a resource, but um, intermittent fasting, uh, you know, could be a tool that some people use. I would say um, there's still a lot of, you know, sort of research or evidence out there. Um, and it's kind of the headline is changing day to day. So um, I, I'd be happy to share a resource after. Yeah. Any, any other questions? Yeah. I see someone else is typing. Um, yes, yeah, I'd be happy to share the links. Great idea to put them in the chat in case we don't have time to come back later. Um, I'll go ahead and do that now. There's a couple of them. Yeah. Oh, great question. So someone said, um, can you recommend a healthy substitute for sugar? Uh, good question. So, you know, we don't technically need any sugar and, you know, in our diet, we can survive without it. Um, there's so many different, um, you know, sugars on the market um, or you know, sugar substitutes. Uh, there has been some research just in the last few days about um, stevia, things like that. So um, I, I can, after the presentation, I, I'd be happy to share a resource. But um, I, I would say, you know, just in general, if you're finding that you you have a lot of added sugar in your diet, just working on ways to cut back, um, maybe uh, uh, re replacing with honey if that's possible, not for children under one, um, and you know, if you, I, I always say it's, um, it's changing where you are. So if you, you know, I meet with many clients, maybe they're having soda every single day or regular cola or lots of added sugar. It's, it's working towards the recommendation or the healthy plate. So maybe it's cutting back. Maybe if you always drink regular cola, or you're switching to a diet cola. It's a stepping stone to get you to have water with lemon kind of thing. So great question. Bear with me, I'm trying to multitask. Copy and paste those links. There's um, eatrightmyplate.gov, um, the MyPlate Planner, that is actually out of New York City. I really like that one because the visual, um, I find it's a helpful one to kind of put on the fridge as a reminder. Maybe you tape it next to your desk. Um, and then I also included those like uh, quick lunch ideas. Um, honestly, I have this list printed and on the side of my fridge because even as a dietitian, we get tired and like, oh, what do you guys want for lunch? What am I going to make? So um, it's good to, you know, have that refresher. Oh, yeah, I could put hard boiled eggs or I could put, you know something else. Um, 
And then this smoothie link is actually, it's a dietitian that specializes in um, gut health and she actually works with uh, many patients with um, like specific medical conditions, but I really love this handout. So that's why I've included it um, just because she shows how you can build a healthy smoothie or shake that really has all components to a healthy diet. So she includes different ideas for healthy fat, for um, for protein um, and things like that. So I kind of, I always go back to this one. Uh, and then lastly is the um, low cost healthy meal ideas. So lots of links, I have lots of resources, um, but thank you all so much for, um, for joining today. And I'm happy to stay on for a minute or two if anyone wants to come off mute and ask a question not in the chat, I'd be more than happy to talk. And if not, I give you back four minutes of your day. Thank you.